give me a mic. Thank you. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Riley and Kimmy Show. Well, hello out there. It's me, Winnie the Pooh. And don't forget to remember to stay tuned to the Riley and Kimmy Show. And don't forget to remember to keep on bouncing, says Tigger. <laughs> Welcome to the Riley and Kimmy Show. I am your host, Patrick Riley. Right next to me is the person who bounces all over the place, but uh, keeps it normal as much as possible and does not bounce while driving the car. Might bounce while riding in the car, but doesn't bounce while driving the car or the truck or any form of motorized vehicle. Kimmy, I got one name. Kimmy. Welcome to this episode. This episode is actually a tribute episode, Kimmy. We're going to uh, do a couple of things here, actually revolving around one thing. We're going to focus on Cinderella, the current movie that's out, uh, just released, the 2015 film by Kenneth Branagh. And also we're going to go back in time to the golden age of radio to something that is rarely heard, and it is Cinderella-based. And if you are a fan of cartoons... You will want to stick with us here on the Riley and Kimmy Show. Don't be frightened because I say old-time radio. Not, not, not at all. This One of the reasons, by the way, we do old-time radio things is to keep it alive, to uh, keep the memory going, and to just uh, share how important radio was to the world of nerdum and pop culture way back when. All right, now, right now, what we're going to do, uh, before we uh, sat down into the studio to record this episode of the Riley and Kimmy Show... We went to a movie. And it is time for us. Well, we're going to actually put her into the reviewer's chair, the movie critic's chair. And it's time for us to do a non-paid movie review. These are the kind that really matter because Kimmy here, our non-paid movie critic, is not... Uh, you know, owing anybody anything. There were no comp tickets involved. Tickets were purchased. No favors. This is just the honest truth. And it's now time for us to do the movie review. It stinks. Uh, well, okay. Uh, I, I don't know if that's what she's going to say. I, I'm not, I don't know. You and I have not talked about the movie at all. It's one of the things we don't, we, we don't do. Uh, you know, we watch the film. We don't say, you know, did you like it? Didn't like it? Whatever. Right now is when we will discuss the film real quick here. And the movie we're going to talk about is Kenneth Branagh's brand new Cinderella. Now, Kimmy, what did you think of the new movie? Uh, I liked it. Okay. Compare I it. didn't love it. Okay. Did you love the animated version of Disney's animated film? Actually, I don't think I really saw the animated version in... Uh, as a child. Really? Okay, so you don't really have that to compare with at all. Um, I think I saw it as an adult right. once, but um, I I thought it was a, a, a fair adaptation from, you know, from the cartoon. Okay. Were you upset there wasn't the song and dance mm -mm. kind of thing going on? Okay, no problem with that. Although there is the little uh, wink and a nod to it. Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. with Helen Bottom Carter's one scene she does mention one of the songs mm -hmm. when she's doing her magic mm -hmm. okay who stood out as really great and what was something maybe as a detractor to you and uh, do, okay i got three questions but do, do those two. helena bottom carter was uh very strong all right uh she's great in most everything that she does um so yeah i would say definitely she was probably a highlight and uh, th in fact, the whole, that was probably my favorite part of the whole movie was uh, um, her and then just the, uh, her magic. Yes. And the special effects with that, I thought were pretty good. Okay. Uh, anything really that they shouldn't have done? Um... Oh, and and I also thought that um, what's her name, the actress that played the evil stepmother, uh, she was Kate 
Blanchett. Yes. Yes. I thought she was pretty, pretty good for that role. Okay. I thought she was, you know, very good for that role. Um, I don't know. The prince, he, his teeth were distracting. They, oh, it looked like Kimmy. he was wearing dentures. Kimmy. <laughs> All right. No, no, enough of that. Okay. My, my next question for you is, is it too old of a film for kids? No, I don't mean because it's a, a story from 1600s. I mean, is it too mature the way it's shot and presented? Mm, it might be a little bit. Do you think this will have lasting power? An example is Star Wars, which was done in 1977, has lasting power. Do you think that, or or Wizard of Oz is an example? Do you think this is a Wizard of the Oz, Wizard of Oz from 1939? Will this be, you know, 70 years in the future? Somebody will go, oh, man, that movie was just way ahead of its game and it's priceless. Or will it be just something maybe forgotten? No, I don't. I don't think so. You don't think it has that lasting power, no. that magic, if no. you will. There, no. Okay. No. Do you want to see it again? I'm glad that I went to see it. Okay. I probably won't see it again ah. in the theater. Do you want to own it on Blu-ray DVD? Mm, maybe when it's in the budget bin. Now I like Kenneth Branagh. Uh huh. But I kind of wish Tim Burton had done this film. I was thinking that. I was thinking, what would this have been like if if uh, Tim Burton had done it? What would it have been? I, I, it, it probably would have had a little bit more darkness that I think it did need. I think it needed to be, have some... Did you want... I wanted it to be a little more adult and a little bit more dark. Now, I will not reveal the answer to this. You can investigate it if you want, because there might be some kids listening to this. But the evil stepmother wants her children their feet to fit into that glass slipper in the you know in the old stories not the disney cartoon version she does something to make it happen is that the kind of dark path you're mm-hmm. talking about going down yep. wow okay yeah uh like you know like the grimm's fairy tales okay uh, i mean they were darker than you know okay so or, you wanna... originally these stories were were pretty that's true. Those, those kind of stories were pretty dark. And I I guess, yeah, I would have liked to have seen that to contrast more with the the magical fairy tale. I actually think if fairy he, tale. well, if he had been involved, I think it would have been more magical. Uh, and, mm-hmm. it, it would have felt more magical, been more brighter in areas where necessary. Mm-hmm. He, would, he would have done a color palette so much different. Uh, mm-hmm. differently uh and uh, i just i i think I, yeah I, I, I was thinking the exact same thing at one point i can't remember what what, what point during the movie maybe it was when helena bottom carter <laughs> was on on the screen because you know right you know she might make you think of tim burton because they were you know were were um past tense but yeah i i exactly thought of that too i, think I mean the ballroom I, scene would have been better uh, mm-hmm. w- with him, I actually I and I'm, you know, Burton's not. I'm not, you know, a, a Burton huge fan. I Meaning everything he does is great. No, 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 you know. But I just think this was something right designed for him, mm-hmm. uh, and I just think he would have been the better better choice. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I do love what Kenneth Branagh did with Thor. Oh yeah, I that lo- movie had magic. That Thor one. I like it's the better of the movies of the Thor films so far. Right. That that was the better Thor movie. And I like what he did with it. I really like what he did with that. Um, to me, this movie's not little kid enough uh, to, you know, have that lasting power per se. Uh-huh. And, and it's not dark enough. And, you know, I, I think there are things in Once Upon a Time that are darker uh, than I saw right. in this film. Right, I think so too. So I think... People are used to seeing, you know, some of the darkness stuff on Once Upon a Time. It's not exactly there. So it's maybe it was too middle of the road. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm feeling. I mean, let's face it, we're we're in a society that uh, all age, not, and I'm not bashing anybody here. There are a lot of young ages that watch Walking Dead. So True. They're seeing a darker world, and I, I I'm not saying I want a dark, dark movie like this, but I think you could have good being very magical light and thing in the dark really dark you know and i don't want a movie like snow white that in a huntsman type thing i'm not talking that at all but yeah and one of the things i will point out that i think was in need was 
editing. Yes, I I do think it could Time. have been a little bit um, snappier. Yeah, I, I think it drug on. I think it was a little bit more drug out than it should have been. Correct. So that is just basically our review, a free review. That's Kimmy's. A non-biased review. That's right, and we don't agree one hundred percent here. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a little. You like it a little more than I do. What would you grade it on a scale? You know, in the uh, the alphabet scale, what what would you give it? Uh, a B. I give it a C. So that just gives you an idea. Now let's go to somebody else here, a person who's really into uh, cosplaying and loves magic and loves fantasy and you know really into that genre. Let's see what that individual thought of Cinderella. Let's check in with Marco. We went last night. I was impressed by his visualization. The story was good. Not great, but good. The costumes were fantastic. A lot of them will be easily reproduced for cosplay, and they definitely have a flair that is definitely Disney. I give it on my 1 to 10 scale a 7.5 on the cosplay scale. So, reporting is the professor of cosplay, Marco Manz. From here in the land. Well, thank you, Marco, for checking in. Uh, we always have an open phone line for you to check in about cosplay and films and things like that. And, uh, you know, I think he liked it probably more than we did. Don't you? Uh, 7.5. Oh, 75 percent. Okay. Uh, I would say, I because I'm thinking 80 percent, and it sounds like you're thinking like more like 70 percent. So I think he's in between us. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. But he likes it for costuming. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that? Mm-hmm. I, I think that's maybe one of the things that really selling him. It's like, wow, what are those costumes? Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I'm not going to reveal which ones, Marco. But we were watching the film and we were notating which ones that he would wear, <laughs> weren't we? I think the costumes were beautiful. Yeah. And actually, you know what I found more entertaining? Hmm. The opening Frozen thing. Really? Oh, I love that. Really? Yeah, I did. I loved it. You didn't like that? Wow. Okay, we we won't go there. Uh, Are you serious? Yeah, I did. I liked it. Anyway, okay, we won't go there. All right, what we will do now is go back in time. We're going back to 1938 here, Kimmy. The Mickey Mouse Theater of the Air. That's what it was called. It was an old-time radio show, and it was a musical variety radio series designed for children, sponsored by Pepsodent, and broadcast on NBC, and it was broadcast from the Disney Little Theater on the RKO lot from January 2nd to May 15th, 1938. Now, do you have any idea why they did this? They did it for a reason, to promote something. Mm-hmm. It, was basically a, it was basically a way to be an ad, without being an ad, to lure people into an upcoming movie. Any mm-hmm. idea what Disney film? 1938. Cinderella. Well, you're kind of close. Snow it, White. Yeah, there you go. It was created to help promote the release of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Now, this was a Sunday afternoon show, and it featured regular Disney characters like Mickey Mouse. And by the way, it's worth checking out because Walt Disney, for the first four episodes, is the voice of Mickey Mouse. Donald Duck by Clarence Nash, Minnie Mouse by Thelma Boardman, Goofy by Stuart Buchanan, and Clarabelle Cow is in this by Florence Gill, some classic voice actors, and why this is fun to listen to from an old-time radio aspect and putting it into today's standards, not just because you're hearing cartoon voices, classic ones. When they shot a movie and they voiced it, they made a flub. They could just redo it. Not with this. This was done live. So you're going to hear interaction of the voice talents all done live. You're going to hear the story done live because back then they didn't have analog recording on tape. They, they had some very complex things to do. Now, fortunately, these shows, some of them, did survive the course of time because somebody decided to record them way back when, whether it be the network, which was rare. They had the capability to do it on these big uh, discs that were similar to a record, if you know what that is, or very big radio stations in markets like New York, Chicago, or Los Angeles. But those were rare uh, because it cost money to record those and it usually took more than one individual one operator to record those so they just, they didn't survive and plus they took up space 
a lot of space. So they may have recorded them for a little bit, and then they destroyed them. I'll share a story on an upcoming episode of the Riley and Kimmy Show about where a lot of those were destroyed. We we have a friend to the Riley and Kimmy Show that witnessed that and has some of those original recordings that were saved when he was there the day they were throwing them out a long, long time ago. Way before, I know this is a long time, way before Riley and Kimmy crawled on the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. Now, right now, let's... uh. Let's go back and do a tribute to Cinderella, a Cinderella version from 1938 with some very familiar voices as we go back to the world of the golden age of radio, the theater of the mind and the Mickey Mouse Theater of the Air. Here's Cinderella, 1938 on the Riley and Kimmy Show. The Pepsi and Company presents Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Hi, folks. With Minnie, Donald Duck, and all the Disney gang. It's Mickey's show. And today, Mickey is taking the gang through the magic mirror to the days of Cinderella. Yes, sir, to that famous day when Cinderella lost her glass slipper and won the prince. The gang is going to the prince's masquerade ball to watch it happen, and that's why they're all masked in costume. Minnie is dressed as a bewitching Julia. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> and as for Mickey... Ah, oh, John, don't tell him. <laughs> Mickey is decked out as a Romeo. Oh. Boy, is he the breath of romance in his lace and ruffles. Ah, oh, boy. <laughs> a big pink ostrich plume sweeping from his velvet bonnet, his manly calves encased in purple tights. Oh, and... I can't help it. Many, many worms. <laughs> it's my idea, John. Isn't he cute? Cute? He's ravishing. But those purple tights, Mickey, don't they seem a bit saggy at the knees and slightly droopy? Yeah, I'll say they're droopy. They're, they're an old pair of groupies. Oh, look, Mickey. You're losing them again. Okay, okay. What do I have to wear these things for anyway? <laughs> Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Madame Clara Clark in a gay 90s costume. Oh, Clara, you look simply stunning. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Mickey, Clara. Isn't he gorgeous? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, well. <laughs> yeah, but just wait to see our pictures in Radio Mary magazine. Boy, do I look swell. Yeah, me too. Uh-huh. And now, while Mickey heists up his purple tights and we await the arrival of those two financial wizards, Donald Duck and Goofy, we will hear Felix Mills' arrangement of that immortal round delay, Three Blind Mice. The other night, I went to a swell boxing bout here in Hollywood, 
The fight was a fast and furious affair, and I was surrounded by thousands of shouting, yelling fans, excited fans, whose mouths were open a great part of the time. You know, I really couldn't help noticing what a surprising number of those fight fans had dull, dingy teeth. Teeth whose natural luster and sparkle were hidden by unsightly, masking surface stains. What a shame, I thought, that in this day and age, anyone would tolerate surface stained teeth. Because teeth like that are a real boomerang in social and business contacts. You realize, of course, that you don't have to worry along with such unsightly stains hiding the true sparkle of your smile. No, indeed. Either Pepsodent toothpaste or powder containing irium can show you a safe, gentle, effective way to teeth that shine and sparkle as they naturally should. Oh, hi, hiya, Mickey. <laughs> Donald, Donald, get a load of Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you laugh at Mickey. He's, well, he's beautiful. <laughs> you two birds should laugh. You haven't even bothered to put on costumes for the prince's ball. How come? Well, why gild the lily? <laughs> By the way, where's the goose that almost laid the golden egg? Remember, boys, according to the contract, it's pay that goose two dollars a day or go to jail. Have you got the two bucks? No, but when we get through the mirror, we got ideas. Well, where's the ghost? Well, I'll tell you. You know, we promised her the part of Scarlett O'Hara and Gone with the Wind. Yes, you bunco artist. But where is she now? Well, she's over at the studio taking the screen test. <laughs> Do you think she's got a chance, Goofy? Well, she's got the looks all right, but her, her accent ain't so good. <laughs> By the way, Donald, how about your webfoot sex Ted? Oh, yeah, yeah. Me and Donald took the three bucks you give us and bought some new junk. It's better than ever. Well, gather them together, because if you're going to see Cinderella and the prince, you better get started. All set, Mickey? Oh, yeah, you bet. Okay, call the mirror. Wave well, in a magic mirror. I command you to appear. I hear. I come. Master, what is thy command? Your wish is granted. You shall be obeyed. But hurry now. We must not be delayed. Better get going there, Mickey. He means business. Yeah, come on, gang. Let's go. Oh, hold your hat, Minnie. Here we go. Goodbye, everybody. And Donald, <laughs> give my love to Cinderella. <laughs> hey, uh, what's happened? Where are we? Gosh, it's so dark. I can't see my face in front of my hand. We're not at the Princess Ball. I'm anywhere. Oh, just back of an old house. Ain't no palace, neither. Hey, listen. Oh. Maybe, maybe this is Cinderella's house. Oh, Mickey. I wonder if it is. Well, let's peek on the window and find out. Okay, I'll open it. You go quiet like. There. Move over, Donald. We all want to peek in. Hey, there she is over there by the chimney. Hey, is that Cinderella? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, she's all in rags and just sobbing her heart out. Oh, What's that singing sound? Oh, that's, that's the tea kettle on the fire. It's boiling. Uh-huh. And she's singing something to it.
Don't be frightened, child. I'm your fairy godmother. I've come to help you. No one can help Cinderella. No one. No one but me. I know the prince is giving a ball this evening. And all day you've wept in the chimney corner and prayed you might go. Oh, yes, but that could only happen in my dream. We shall see, child. We shall see. Take that pumpkin there on the hearth. Place it outside the door. But I don't understand. It's not for you to understand, Cinderella. Now, a wave of my magic wand. Oh, what a beautiful golden coach. Six black horses and a coachman. And now, Cinderella, you may go to the ball. Oh, but my clothes, Godmother. Just rags and tatters. Another touch of the magic wand. There, my little maid. You're more beautiful by far than your wicked sister. Glass slippers twinkle on my feet. My gowns are satin shimmer. My jacket is of golden cloth with diamonds all a glimmer. Now, to the palace, my little Cinderella, to dance with the prince. But remember this. If you stay one instant after the twelfth stroke of the midnight hour, your carriage will again become a pumpkin. Your horse is nice. And you, the little cinder girl, you've always been. I shan't forget. Then, farewell, Cinderella. Goodbye, Godmother. Oh, that was wonderful. Ah, sure was. After our time is growing short, we must make haste to reach the royal court. Oh, yeah. we got to get to the ball before Cinderella does. Come on, everybody. Come on up there, girls. Will you ask me for the first dance, please? Announcing Mickey Mouse and Minnie, Crown Prince and Princess of the Realm of Disney. Oh. Sir Donald the Magnificent, Grand Duke of Hollywood, Marquis of the Palace Theater, and Knight of the Trocadero. <laughs> Count Goofy, Madame Clara Clutch, and the Wedfoot Sextet, and all their retainers. <laughs> I bid you welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Your Majesty. I don't like I Why, Donald, aren't you ashamed of yourself? <laughs> so, my fine duck, <laughs> you know a secret, do you? <laughs> yeah, we'll sell it to you for two bucks. Hey, Goofy. Hmm. Well, it really isn't very important, Your Majesty. We were just going to tell you about a beautiful princess. A beautiful princess. You're yeah, wearing glass slippers. Goofy, cut it out. I told you why. Oh. The princess Cinderella. Oh, Mickey. Here she comes. She is lovely. Look, my friends. She glides toward us like a shaft of moonlight. And her slippers are of glass. Did you say that a lady with glass slippers... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Goofy. Welcome, princess Cinderella. Thank you, your highness. Rise, princess. Oh, you seem frightened. Your little hand is trembling. It is true. I am afraid. Ah, it is I who should kneel and tremble. For I am but a prince. But you, surely you are queen of beauty. Ah, sweet flattery. But if you knew my true identity, how small and miserable the realm which I rule. Hush. I told you who you are. But queen of beauty. As for a kingdom, rule my heart. Ah, but now I beg the honor of this dance. I would be delighted, Your Highness. I do. <laughs> that is, um, well, I mean, I'd be delighted, Your Highness. Oh, well, well. Hey, Donald, why don't you find a partner and have a dance? Come on, Minnie. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hey, why are you holding me so funny? What would happen if you put your other arm around me? Oh, huh? my tights would fall off. Come on. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> 
What a dance with a duck? <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> What's the matter, Donald? Why ain't you dancing? <laughs> well, uh, as long as you ain't dancing, will you do me a favor? <laughs> well, there's an awful pretty girl sitting over there, right over there. You get your band together and put some pep into this shindig. Boy, I'll burn up the boards with her. <laughs> Gosh, sure hope she'll dance with me. I ain't been so nervous since the day I was vaccinated. Me and you tripping the light sarcastic, huh? Do you mean it? Are you asking me to dance? Yeah. I'm charmed. I'm delighted. Really, I am. Gosh, are you honest? Oh, yes, I haven't danced all evening. The boys seem to be avoiding me. Gosh, that's, that's funny. Yes, I don't know what the matter is. I simply can't understand, understand, understand. Really, I can't. <laughs> don't hide. Oh, I've been simply dying for a dance for years. Oh, simply dying, dying, dying. dying. Really, I have. Oh, yeah, I'm beginning to see why. Well, listen, sister, how's about me getting you a glass of water? Oh, no, you're not going to get away from me now, you sly rascal. <laughs> you men, you men, you're all the same. Well, uh, sister, how about you and me playing a, a kissing game instead of dancing? Come on, sister, opportunity knocks but once. A kissing game? Did you say a kissing game? Yeah. Would I like to play a kiss? A kiss? A kiss? A kiss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll guard in and kiss you between hicks. No, no, no all you got to do is just close your eyes and start counting. And I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. One, two, three, four. By special request of His Royal Highness, the Pizzicato Polka, introducing Sir Donald Grand Duke of Hollywood and his web foot success. Princess Cinderella alone upon the balcony? Strangely, Highness. I find the music of the night. The birds splashing frog and more sympathetic to my mood than the music of the ducks. And with you here, Princess, even the ducks' music seems ethereal. <laughs> Who are these strange little people? More strange than you imagine. One told me that you would come tonight, and another said you would wear crystal slippers. The one called Goofy keeps asking me if I've lost my slipper. He assured me that I will. It is strange. All too strange. As if our story was already written and they had read it. Do you believe these strange things that they say? I must. You must? Because they say that someday I'll marry you. Oh. Princess, who are you? Your eyes say that we've met before. Ah, oh, yes. We have met many times. When? Where? In my dreams, my prince.
thought we'd live there forever. Just we two. Forever and always, my friend. Hey, 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 Hello, Cinderella. You lost your slipper yet? <laughs> of course not. Why should I? You're a frog out. Hey, hey, dibs on the next dance, Cinderella. Uh-uh, Well, I saw her first. <laughs> Too late, gentlemen. The next dance is mine. Come, princess. Hurry, my little friends. You must join us in the grand walk. Okay, friends. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Cinderella. Yes, Your Highness. I've been wondering, wondering what strange magic brought us together this evening, wondering why you came dancing into my heart. Explaining love is something that I will never endeavor. It's hard to tell when love magic danced into my life tonight, I knew you'd live forever in the kingdom of my heart. <laughs> I'm just a shy maid who is frankly dismayed at the lack of a man to pursue. I don't want a sailor, a gable or tailor. I just want a romance, 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 romance. Oh, really, I do. Hey, Donald, shut up. Remember who you are. I'm not a prince, I'm sure charming, and since you may doubt it, I'll tell you, my system. <laughs> you steps up in place with a peppermint taste, cause it peps up the gals when you kiss them. <laughs> Dance again, Cinderella. I'd love to dance the rest of my life with you, dear. I did. I'd love to. Oh, oh, midnight! My gown, my magic coat! Cinderella, come back! Come back! After an old, after an older king, princess, princess! Oh, don't worry, friends. Don't worry, but what if she's gone forever? Oh, but she isn't. The story has a happy ending. Yeah, just relax. Why did she go? Where will I find her? All you have to do is find her glass slipper. Sure. You do that, you're a cinch. Her glass slipper? Yeah. Good. Good. Search for a glass slipper. A fortune to the man who finds it. A dollar, dollar, dollar. Hey, Prince. Mickey. <laughs> look, Mickey. Her slipper. Whoopee. Yeah. Her crystal slipper. No. All you have to do is find the foot that fits the slipper, and there will be Cinderella. Are you... Are you sure? Oh, absolutely. Then bless you, my friends. Perhaps the story will have a happy ending. Yeah, you betcha. Me and Donald was responsible. But Goofy, where did you find it? Find it? <laughs> we darn her had to break her leg to get it off. After, it is time to say farewell, or here forever you must dwell. Come on, Chief. Well, goodbye, Prince. We gotta go. Thanks for swell time. Goodbye, my friends. And thank you. Goodbye, Prince. Maybe we can come back <laughs> for your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, gang. Well, well, well. Welcome home. Uh, hi, John. Well, Goofy, I saw that you two financial wizards got Cinderella's glass slipper all right. <laughs> oh, see, we did. <laughs> yeah, but did you remember to collect the reward? <laughs> reward? Reward? Sure, don't you remember? The prince offered a fortune to whoever found the glass slipper. Gosh, no, that's right. <laughs> Clean, sparkling, healthy teeth. What a splendid reward for a few moments' daily care. Yes, and your teeth will more than repay you for the care you give them in the added brilliance of your smile and in helping prevent decay and its sometimes serious consequences. Now, obviously, all of us want shining, healthy, healthy teeth, and that's why we so strongly urge you to see your dentist at least twice a year. 
and to brush your teeth with Pepsodent toothpaste or powder containing irium twice each day. I particularly emphasize Pepsodent because Pepsodent alone of all dentifrices contains irium. What does that mean to you? It means this. Marvelous irium helps Pepsodent gently brush away those stubborn, clinging surface stains on teeth that make them dingy and dull, that hide their true natural brilliance. With these masking surface stains gone, your teeth then glisten and gleam with all their glorious natural radiance. And this new beauty your smile reveals comes about safely, since Pepsodent with irium contains no bleach, no grit, no pumice. Try it. gang, it's time to say goodbye until next week. Goodbye, everybody. Well, Goofy, Donald, I suppose you know that if you can't pay the goose her two dollars, you're going to spend the next few weeks behind the bars. Is there anything you'd like to say before they take you to jail? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not all. Here's a telegram that just came for you. It's from the goose. And here's what she says. Quote, I still haven't got the part of Scarlett O'Hara, but they, I know they like me at the studio. I heard one of the directors say he'd like to have me as the main attraction at a banquet they're having next Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to run across that goose at a banquet, too. There's plenty of potatoes and gravy. (laughs) Restrain yourself, Goofy. Here's the rest of the telegram. As you know, the only thing that's holding me up for the part is the fact that I don't have a southern accent. But don't worry, I'm taking lessons from a freshwater seagull from Miami. (laughs) So long, honey child, and in the meantime, don't forget the two bucks. Unquote. Signed, Goosey Goosey. Hey, Donald, we can't waste any time. Let's get out and scare up that two bucks. Yes, sir. You better make it two dollars and a half, boys. This telegram came collect. <laughs>